dim lights, the band playing, and you're crushing your arms as you dance the night away. That was the picture painted here at this place of refuge from the hum and drum of city life. This was a happy place. This was the Vanity Ballroom. The elegant Vanity Ballroom, designed by Charles Ennegree, would open in 1929, right before the Great Depression. Many theaters and ballrooms were opening in Detroit in the 20s. Due to the stock market crash of 1929, the Vanity would be the final ballroom to open in Detroit. The Vanity would become one of the most popular dancing venues in the city something that would help it survive the economic crash. The vanity would be ran by Edward J. Strada for about 30 years. At its height, the vanity held about 2,000 people, and at only 35 cents per ticket, it was a steal. But that wasn't the only thing that attracted people to the vanity. You see, inside of its walls was a Mayan temple. Well, not a real one, of course. But that was the aesthetic that they went with. And that aesthetic made the vanity very, very unique. A bottom floor full of commercial spaces, a soda fountain, a bar, a bandstand, and a clock room. The vanity had everything to keep patrons entertained. But that would only last for a few decades. By the 1950s, the country would begin to become more and more introverted. With the rise of television, rock and roll, and the nuclear family, dance halls were beginning to die out. The times of big bands was over, and musicians were becoming increasingly expensive. This would result in the Vanity closing in 1958. The Vanity would briefly open in 1964 for small dancing events that served the community. They would open for churches and civic events, but it wouldn't be enough to keep attendance. That same year, the owner of the vanity, Edward Strada, would pass away. This is all that's left of the vanity ballroom. This was a place that once hundreds, thousands of people would come to, to dance and have a good time. Be careful of the hanging metal. Ladies first. Pitch black down here. Even with the light from the camera, it's hard to see. It's a very low hanging ceiling, so be careful. It's also a lot cooler down here, so there might be mold.
Welcome, Posty. We then headed back to the first floor. Stairs lead up. I'm not too sure about the structure there. It looks like it's already collapsing. Yeah. It's already collapsing. That's not a very safe way to go. We'll see if we can find another way up there here's the rest of the first floor there's some light over there This is an original. One of the ones from the 20s when the ballroom first opened. That is incredible. That means that there's still some original things in here and it hasn't all been completely stripped yet. been torn out. This could have been a powder room or something like that. Well there's a small there's a small room right there with a mirror in it too. I'm waiting. So it's probably a hold on. Nick. Nick where are you? Hello. Nick. Nick where are you? Nick. I'll take a picture of that. Could have been. Right here are the original stairs. 
I let up here, but I don't know if I can make it all the way up to the second floor. It's, it's like caving in right here. I don't know if this was placed here intentionally to help people cross or... Okay, yeah, that's, that's not gonna work. Let's try going around the side. This was placed intentionally in the final. Yeah, that was. So all I this was a mercantile a, area. Let me come up here. I think the crossing on the side is gonna work. There's a lot of weight on here already. That didn't sound good. The middle of it is Yeah, I step very carefully. Trying to get over here. The actual stairs over here are concrete. This was just a, uh, uh, there's metal along the sides, metal struts. So if you walk along the sides, you can make it up here, but the middle's all wood. That's yeah, why it's uh, collapsed. Some of the wooden pieces you stepped on to get up there warped just a little bit. And I'm twice your weight, so. There's an entrance over here too. It's probably locked from the outside. Well, I'll be right back. You guys stay down there. Oh my gosh. Guys, it's absolutely incredible up here. They still have parts of the original Mayan aesthetic. Just be careful. Wow, this is incredible. This is absolutely amazing. Look at that. Look at this place, man. I would have loved to see it back in the day. And it was still, still active. Fortunately, it's not very safe anymore. Especially getting up to is a bit of a trouble. I don't think it'll be much longer until the only way up here is collapsed entirely. Here was the ballroom. People enjoyed themselves. I think that might even be some original curtain still there. It doesn't look very worn down though. This is definitely one of the most incredible places I've been to. This is truly phenomenal. Look at this right here. This was the old bar and soda fountain. During Prohibition, they didn't have alcohol because alcohol was illegal at the time. So they had a soda fountain here 
is what they called it. They would give you soda instead of alcohol. Wow. Just look at this place. lead to. Oh, I saw this from the outside. This is where I my opera. It's just a drop though. <laughs> These stairs on the outside, and I think they lead right here. It's all locked up, of course, though. It wasn't quite abandoned in the 40s, but I did see a revival in the 60s and 70s before finally closing yeah, down so permanently. Close. Yeah, I'd want to get in here before they turned it into like a rock place because the mosh pits really, really ruined it. That's when the vandalism started. I still think it's a shame that they tore everything out instead of reviving the place. So this ladder would give you access up to the rafters, but it looks pretty old. I wager these benches are the originals. originals. I want to come back here a second or third time at some point in my life. This is like, I don't know how it's hard. This is just, wow. This is weird. I think you left your hat over here. In the 1970s, a small amount of interest would come back to the vanity. It was something to break the boredom of everyday life. It was a good step away from the boob tube, as one Sam Leeds put it in 1975. During the 70s, it would be host of famous musicians like Ted Nugent and the Stooges. In 1980, the Ronald and Dolan Murphy twins would buy the vanity. They began to rebuild the crumbling insides and try to bring life back to the building. They envisioned a return to ballroom dancing and disco party. In 1983 it would open, but close the same year. It was brought back in 1986 with a new Caribbean theme, but it just wasn't enough. The vanity is listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and some believe it is salvageable. But if nothing is done soon, this wonderful place will be nothing but rubble. In its time, it was a place of joy. An elegant ballroom with beautiful architecture. It has sat slowly crumbling on the streets of Detroit. For years, its story had gone untold, but it will always be part of Detroit's cultural history.